Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. I bought the way cool RF Explorer WSUB1G Plus handheld spectrum analyzer. It is a very impressive piece of equipment for the price that you pay, well worth every penny. It has the range of 50 kilohertz to 960 megahertz, which seemed quite adequate for my needs, but I discovered that it didn't quite get me to where I wanted to go, so I ordered the RFEM 4G expansion module to get me there. In this video, I will explore the motivation behind adding this module to my RF Explorer. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. I make a concerted effort to respond to every single comment. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Well, we begin this video by asking the question, well, why do I want this? The obvious answer to the question, why should I install this module, is that I want the additional frequency range. My RF Explorer has a range from 50 kilohertz to 960 megahertz. Shouldn't this be enough? Well, there are a lot of things out there that operate above 960 megahertz, like Wi-Fi routers and cell phones and Bluetooth devices and a whole lot more. Is there the possibility that we might need the capabilities of RF Explorer in this world of gigahertz signals? Well, you never can tell. To see if I have extended frequency range, I will set my old Hewlett Packard signal generator to 2 gigahertz with an output of minus 30 dBm. I will connect this directly to my RF Explorer. Then I need to set my RF Explorer for a center frequency of 2 GHz with a span of 10 MHz. To use this newfound awesomeness, you have to choose between the two frequency modules, the two inputs. To do this, you go to the menu, you go to the frequency menu, at the very bottom, you'll notice it says module. Right now it's set to 50K to 960 meg. So if I choose that particular option and hit the little circle, enter, that toggles between the two modules. Now you'll notice it says 240 to 4000 megahertz. And then you hit the back, and now I am in the using the new module, which is where my connector happens to be at the moment. I've showed you how to set up your RF Explorer in, in handheld autonomous mode. Now we're in the software. If you go to device, you'll notice enable left SMA connector. Enable right SMA connector. We want the right one, that's the high frequency one. And now we're going to set our frequency to 2000 and our span to 10 megahertz. And looky there, there's our 2 gigahertz signal on the screen. So far, we've shown that yes, 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 indeed, we have achieved our first goal of extended frequency range. The second reason lay in a limitation of the hardware, which is mitigated by the addition of the expansion module. There is a 1.8 megahertz artifact that shows up when discovering signals at or above 240 megahertz. That is to say, you will see a pronounced signal about 1.8 megahertz away from the real signal. This signal does not actually exist. It's a product of the RF Explorer's hardware. I have set up my signal generator to 560 megahertz at minus 30 dB. Then 
I connected it directly to the input of my RF Explorer. In the PC software, I set the number of sweep points to 2048. I set the span to 5 megahertz. And I set the center frequency to 560 megahertz. Now we can easily see the signal generator signal at the center of the screen at 560 megahertz. But take a look off to the right, about 1.8 megahertz away from the carrier. There's a significant pip on the screen. Now, it doesn't matter how many plot points you choose, whether you're in high resolution or standard resolution, it's still there. In fact, let's change our plot points to the standard 112 plot points. Here's our signal generator signal, and here 1.8 megahertz away is the artifact. Our first reaction is, well, what's wrong with your signal generator? To dispel this thought, I will set up my higher end spectrum analyzer exactly the same way as the RF Explorer is set up. See now, just a nice single pip on the screen right at 560 megahertz. So is this a frequency dependent thing? The innards of the RF Explorer operate on two different frequency ranges. The low range is from 50 kilohertz to 240 megahertz. The high range is from 240 megahertz to 960 megahertz. So far what we've been seeing is on the high range. So let's try this on the low range of the RF Explorer, which is below the magic 240 megahertz. As you can see here, I set the center frequency to 230 megahertz with everything else the same. Looking along the line here, you can see everything looks nice and clean. Well, it turns out that it affects readings at or above 240 megahertz, which is the high range of the RF Explorer without the expansion module. The good news is the installation of this expansion module cures this issue entirely. Did our 1.8 megahertz artifact go away? I set the frequency generator for 560 megahertz. I set the center frequency here for 560 megahertz. The span to 5 megahertz, just like before. And I am in the high range using the right hand connector. And you'll notice that there is no 1.8 megahertz artifact. Well, what happens? If we go to the left SMA connector, the original one, now I have to switch connections. And we have, oh. so the answer is for frequencies at 240 megahertz and above, if you don't want to see this artifact, you need to use the high range through the new module. Lastly, there is a firmware issue, which the RF Explorer folks are working hard to fix even as I create this video. To my knowledge, it affects firmware versions 3.32 and 3.33. I can't speak to earlier versions than this. It has to do with using the RF Explorer when used with your PC in high resolution mode. It does not affect standard resolution. They have the most awesome PC software to use along with your RF Explorer. If you're going to be doing any bench work at all with your RF Explorer, it is worth a try. When you use the RF Explorer as a standalone handheld spectrum analyzer, you are limited to 112 samples across the screen, which means that if your span is 1 megahertz, your frequency resolution is 9.01 kilohertz, period. Now, if you want to understand how to calculate this, see my video on how the RF Explorer works. I've put a link up in the corner up here for you. However, when it's connected to your PC, now that's a different story, but only if you own the RF Explorer Plus. With the RF Explorer Plus, 
you can use high resolution mode, which gives you up to 4,096 plot points. Now, we immediately think, wow, we can get really good resolution, like down into the Hertz range with a narrow span. Well, the reality is that the best resolution you can achieve is one kilohertz. This means that if you choose 4,096 points, the minimum span will be the software enforced 4.095 megahertz, which gives us one kilohertz resolution. But that is still really good. The problem with the 3.33 version of firmware that I have at the moment is that you will get a flat line with resolutions at 2 kilohertz and below with the WSUB1G RF Explorer in high resolution mode. What this means is that with 4096 plot points, the minimum span will be 8.198 megahertz. Spans below this will give you a flat line and no data. Well, kudos to the ARF Explorer folks because they worked hard to discover where this issue lay. They are working on a solution to this issue which will be provided in an up and coming firmware release. So let's take a look at this phenomenon. I have set up the number of sweep points to 1024. I have chosen a center frequency of 560 megahertz and a span of 10 megahertz. That means that the resolution is 9.775 kilohertz. Now, as we can see here, all is well, well, except for this artifact over here. To get a resolution that is just above the two kilohertz limit, I need to set a span of 2.05 megahertz. This will give us a resolution of 2.049 kilohertz. So let's change it to 2.05 megahertz. And you can see here, all looks pretty doggone good. Everything is there. We got to have all, it looks just like it's supposed to look. Now, let's drop this back to a span of 2.04 megahertz, which will give us a resolution of just under the two kilohertz level at 1.994 kilohertz. So we'll change this to 2.04. We are now at a step of 1.994. And notice all we get is a flat line. After much work on the part of the RF Explorer folks, they discovered that this is corrected by the addition of the expansion module. Now let me emphasize once again, this is a firmware issue that they have told me that will be corrected in a future firmware release. Lastly, let's see if we have healed the flat line issue. For this, I'm not going to change anything except the number of plot points. Let's set it for 2048. Define sweep points and 2048. Now first, we'll verify that all is well with a resolution above two kilohertz. So this means a span of 4.3 megahertz. So let's change this to 4.3. And we can see that we are getting data and signal and all kinds of lovely things here. All right, now let's drop it down near the one kilohertz resolution which means that we need a span of 2.05 megahertz. So 2.05 megahertz, send, and what do we get? Look at that beautiful, beautiful signal with one kilohertz resolution. Now, what about on the low range? Let's check that out. To go to the low range, I'm going to go to device, enable left SMA connector. I've already moved my signal generator. 
center frequency of 560 megahertz with a span of 2.05 megahertz. And look at that. We have a step of one kilohertz and we have all the stuff that we're interested in there. Look at that. So I decided to buy and install the expansion module because, well, I wanted the additional frequency range. I really didn't want the artifact and I didn't particularly care for the flat lines and I'm way, way too impatient to wait for the fix to come. So I'm really glad I did, and I think that you will be too, for all the same reasons. In the next video, I will be walking through the entire installation of the expansion module, step by step by step, so stay tuned. The link to this video is up here in the corner for you. Now, if you found this video helpful, please click on the like, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, Toodaloots.